Women Worldwide with Deirdre Breckenridge introduces incredible stories shared by women across the globe who have experienced the great heights of success and, at times, the agony of defeat. With a vision to impart wisdom and advice on how to tackle barriers and sort of new heights, the show uncovers different perspectives to help you find your inner strength and to power up your own voice so you can excel in life. Welcome to Women Worldwide. I'm your host, Deirdre Breckenridge. Oh, I cannot wait to introduce my special guest today. Let's just say he's uh, the perfect example of what happens when you merge the power of pure creativity with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, so ADHD, and then sprinkle a dose of adventure and make it all work to your advantage. Well, you get my friend and colleague, Peter Shankman. <laughs> so Peter's with us today. Um, he's the founder of Shank Minds. He's an author, entrepreneur, corporate keynote speaker, and he's recognized as a worldwide connector. That's what I love about him. And also known for radically new ways of thinking about ADHD. And that's we're gonna, what we're going to talk about today. So I met Peter back in 1999 when he interviewed in my first book, Cyber Branding. We've been friends ever since. Peter, it's so great to have you on my show. Welcome. Always a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Jenny. Well, okay, so you have quite the story, um, and we certainly don't have enough time on this podcast, but maybe you could just talk about how, you know, you've transitioned into helping people with ADHD. Uh, you've called it a gift and not a curse. You've launched a, a podcast, FTN, Faster Than Normal. Maybe you could just give us a little bit of the backstory on how you got there. Yeah, I spend the majority of my time uh, on an airplane. I spend my time talking to everyone. I'm always looking uh, to sort of keep my brain in a fast state of motion. Uh, forward forward motion is thrilling to me, and I really enjoy it. And um, because of that, you know, I never looked at ADHD as a curse. I looked at it as a gift. It was difficult growing up, but over time, it really became very beneficial to me. And so as I was, uh, someone asked me, you know, where, where does my success come from? And I never really thought of myself as having that much success, but the more I looked and the more I did research, the more I realized that a lot of it really came from the fact that I just like talking to people, trying new things that don't necessarily, um, uh, you know, don't necessarily fit the mold or fit the norm. And so in doing that, I, I realized, I wonder how much my ADHD, uh, plays a role in this. And over time, um, in doing the homework and doing the research, I realized quite extensively. And so from there, I uh, created uh, this podcast called Faster Than Normal. It's currently the number one podcast on uh, iTunes for ADHD. Um, I am in the process of finishing up a book on Faster Than Normal, uh, which is also um, uh, by the same name, uh, going to be published in November of 17 by uh, Tarji Perjean. And uh, they're an imprint of Random House, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So, you know, my, my basis is that everyone wants faster stuff. You know, you, you'd never turn down a Lamborghini for a Honda, uh, <laughs> but you need to know how to use it to your advantage. Well, congratulations on your podcast being the number one in its category and also for your book that's coming out. That That is amazing. And, and you are definitely faster than normal. I know you're kicking things out at, at lightning speed. Peter, you, you know, you mentioned when you were younger, did you know that you had ADHD or is this something that you discovered later in your life? I think I always knew I was different. I think I always knew there was something uh, that was, you know, strange about me, as it were. Um, I never really had a name for it growing up. ADHD didn't really exist then. It was a sit down, you're disrupting the class. Right. And over time, <laughs> you know, over time, uh, the last 10, 15 years, I really started to understand what it was uh, that it was coming from. And then and, uh, I realized what I could do with it. So what, how do you, uh, because you hear stories about ADHD and, and mostly about the children and just the comment that you made, sit down and stop disrupting the class. How do you keep your focus strong? And whether that's, you know, at work, at home, when you're working out, what, what are you doing? 
for me, it comes down to several things. I have to have a plan. I have to know what I'm doing. A lot of it is about, um, I think a lot of it is about uh, exercise. You know, it, for me, it's about figuring out ways to compensate for the dopamine and l- lack of dopamine and lack of serotonin that I have, uh, that's missing from my brain, which is what happens when people have ADHD. So for me, how do I get those back? Um, well, that's exercise. That's doing things like skydiving. It's mm-hmm. doing things like, uh, I just I did another half Ironman this past weekend. Um, for me, exercise is really the best medication out there, but, uh, I'd say it's a bunch of other things too. It's the constant desire for creativity, desire to learn, uh, desire to improve, um, you know, I, I don't, like I said, forward motion is thrilling. I don't like to sit still. Yeah, so that you sort of thrive on the, the forward motion. And you've been doing the skydiving for how long and the Ironman for how long? I've been jumping. I got my license to skydive in 2005. I have about 400 jumps. And I started my triathlon experience in oh, 2001, maybe. And I did my first. Uh, Ironman in 2010. I did the second Ironman in 2014. And uh, yeah, I just, I enjoy it. It's, it's something exciting about it. Do you train alone or do you find that, are you training with other people to help you stay focused? How, how does that work? Well, it's funny. One of the things for me is I'm, I'm very much a morning person. And so, um, you know, and that's part of my, um, that's part of the way that I, uh, utilize my ADHD is, is I'm up ridiculously early, usually before 4 a.m. And so um, my best friend slash running partner um, who's done these races with me, he is a, um, he is a teacher, public school teacher, and the only way we can run together is if we both run early. So as it, we're both lucky that we both enjoy running early. So we're out in the streets by uh, at least once a week by 3.30 in the morning. Oh, my gosh. Um, God bless and we're doing like anywhere <laughs> from uh, anywhere from six to twenty to fifteen, maybe twenty miles, and it's great. It's it's such a wonderful, wonderful way to start the day. And you know, by the time we're done, we've run fifteen, twenty miles, and like other people aren't even awake yet. It's just it's a great, great, great feeling. What are the city streets like when you're running at three thirty or four yeah. in the morning? Are they empty? Yeah. Or are they still busy? Oh, they're so empty. They're wonderfully beautiful. They're just empty. They're peaceful. They're you really own New York City. That, that is awesome. So you mentioned the plan before. Just a, a quick question on that. Is that really a written out plan? That is it a monthly plan? Is it a daily plan? How are you managing that? Um, I think, you know, it varies day to day, but I have a great assistant who schedules my life. She doesn't let me do much of anything uh, without her permission. Um, That's good. Which is good. Which is very good because that allows me to, um, to do exactly what I'm supposed to be doing when I'm supposed to be doing it. Right. So, you know, she doesn't let me schedule anything in my calendar anymore, for instance, because I tend to screw it up. um, (laughs) She knows you well. (laughs) I let her. Yeah. I let her do it. And it makes sure that I I don't, I don't miss those things. And that's just really important. You know, you have to know what you're really good at and you have to know what you're not good at and what you're not good at. You have to give to other people. Right. Well, you know what, on, on that note, um, knowing what you're good at, delegating to other people, making choices during the day, you know, man- managing the daily choices, how do you do that? Give maybe personal examples of, of what this means to you and how it helps you. Well, I think some of the best, uh, you know, I'll give you the best honesty I can. For me, it's really about... Um, in the movie War Games, movie War Games, there was this great line where the computer finally learned that it said the only winning move is not to play. Hmm. Um, you know, and that's how it prevents war, or in that case, to tech toe. I'm very much aware of that. I know that there are certain things that I can and can't do, um, because if I do them, they will mess me up. And so I don't do them. I avoid doing them. I keep them out of my uh, out of my life. I, I'm, I don't drink. I quit drinking a while back and because I can't have one drink, I'll have multiple drinks. Um, so it's things like that. It's, you know, making sure that I exercise. If I don't exercise, I have a bad day. You know, it's being very aware of sort of what my triggers are, what sets me off, how I can, um, uh, utilize the best and the worst, uh, of me, you know, I don't have a, uh, 
I have a, uh, a rider in my speaking contract that's, uh, for Las Vegas that says if I'm giving a keynote in Las Vegas, I don't have to be on the ground for more than eight hours from wheels down to wheels up because eight hours on the ground from wheels down to wheels up, um, yeah. it's just enough time for me to get in, get the speech and get out. Anything more, um, if I have to stay overnight, well, that's usually never good. <laughs> I'm aware of what I do. I'm aware of what I don't do. And I, I call them that. Yeah. That, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. How much do the people around you um, affect those choices? So, you know, you mentioned that you don't drink. Is it, you know, how, how do you handle your friends who want to go out to dinner with you and they're like, and they, and they just want to drink. They, they're not putting it on you. Does that affect you or you're okay with that? Not the slightest. I know what is important to me. I know what I want to do. I know what matters. And so because of that, I make sure that that's what I do. You know, I don't want to, um, I look at it this way. If I get, if I get up in the morning, um, or if I drink the night before, chances of my getting up in the morning and working tend to be minimal. And so if they're minimal, well, I don't want to feel that way. I don't like to not be, um, working out or not being in control. And I know that if I drink, that's what's going to happen. So I right. simply tell myself what's worth it. Right. And is this what you call your butterfly effect? I remember having a conversation with you a little while back and you were talking about the butterfly effect. That's yeah, very true. One thing leads to another, it leads to another. I, I don't want to, I know that if I have one drink, that's going to end the multiple drinks. It's going to end the three, it's going to be a three day uh, yeah. process. I don't want a three day process. No, def, definitely so I'd not. I'd rather be happy and rather enjoy myself. So with, with so many things going on, how do you spread your energy in the right places so that you can make those great choices, have an exciting different day every day? I don't necessarily need different. I enjoy different, but in doing, you know, for me, I enjoy doing some of the same things over and over again. Like I said, the early morning gym, the, uh, the, uh, making sure that I get the workout and things like that. So I tend to not do a lot of different things. Now that being said, I'm on the road a lot. And so on the, but even on the road, you know, I may be going to new places, but I still do the same things. I stay up when I'm on the plane. I sleep at a normal time. I don't drink. I get up early. I go for uh, a run or a workout. I, you know, I was running in Singapore two weeks ago. I was running in uh, Shanghai three weeks ago. So. I was just going to ask about international travel and how you handle your yeah. workout. I stay awake on the plane. I stay awake on the plane. I sleep when I get to wherever I am, when it's the normal time to go to sleep, and I'm fine the next morning. So no jet lag, no, you kind of if you stay awake. Thing. Sometimes it'll be staying awake as long as 20 hours in a row, but it works. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, I, that, that's one thing that I just don't do well with. <laughs> I, I admire that you can stay up and kind of get your body on track that way. Um, how do you fit social media into your day? I have the usual amount of, um, uh, devices with, you know, can track everything. And I'm, I look when I have a few seconds, but I don't, I don't spend my life on it. I don't, um, I don't focus my life around it. I figure out ways to utilize it for what I'm doing, but you know, I don't, um, I create a lot of content all the time and that's a much different, uh, much different than like hanging out on Facebook. Yeah. So you're using it for your thought leadership and to help people. Exactly. Right. And do you, um, you know, with respect to social media, do you have any favorite places where people can find you more often? So if somebody wanted to talk to Peter Shankman, would it be on Twitter? Would it be on Facebook? Are you more an Instagram guy? Where, where are you hanging out? I'm a little bit of both. Um, I tend to, I tend to be on Facebook. I tend to be on, I mean, I'm on, I'm on every social, um, right. under the name Peter Shankman. Uh, I think I'm more, I have more people who follow me on Facebook and Twitter than I do on Instagram. But you know, for Instagram, I like to post, uh, some fun stuff. So I, I tend to have a good time with it. You know, I, 
But I'm at Peter Shankman on all the socials, and I encourage everyone to uh, to check me out wherever I might be. What do you think of Snapchat? I enjoy it. I use it. I Mashable just voted me the second most powerful influencer on Snapchat. Uh, oh powerful, gosh. powerful marketing influencer on Snapchat that came out last week. That's great. So, what what kind? Give us a, a hint of. You know, or, or, or tell the listeners, I, I've seen you on Snapchat, so I, I know you're there. I've seen your stories. But what is it that you're doing on Snapchat that if somebody was following you, that they would benefit from or, or get to know you? Oh, it's usually photographs of me naked. <laughs> All right, ladies. That's, that's <laughs> not, not actually true. On Snapchat. <laughs> that's not actually true. It's more... It's more photos of, um, you know, Snapchat is me telling stories, what I'm doing, where I am, uh, where I happen to be going, things like that. Um, when I'm on the road, when I'm in Singapore, a lot of times there are pictures of me in the middle of a run or videos of me in the middle of the run. So, you know, they're, they're, they're fun. Oh, it's definitely fun. And do you get feedback from what you're doing? I mean, can you tell when your Snapchat community is saying, yeah, we're, we're loving this, Peter, or on Instagram? I know you, you do post a lot and you do a lot of video. Are they telling you that, you know? Oh, like yeah, the- yeah, that, yeah. They, uh, you know, you got to listen to your audience. If you don't listen to your audience, they won't. If they're not telling you, you know, if you, if you don't listen to them, they won't. They'll tell you what you want, what they want. And then it's your responsibility to give it to them. So, yeah, I'm very much into that. That's right. Be human. Listen to what people say. Well, you know what? You wrote a book all about the customer experience and customer service. So it it feeds into business as well. People are going to tell you how they feel and what they like and what they don't like. And it's, you know, up to us as professionals to take that and do something with it. And if you ignore it, you ignore it at your peril. Exactly. Right. Very true. Well, I know that you don't ignore things and you actually practice what you preach. <laughs> so keep up the good work there. So, Peter, I'm going to ask you to hold your thoughts. We're going to take a quick break to give some love to our sponsor. And in the next segment, Peter is going to discuss um, how to change your routine and how to build relationships when you're a busy entrepreneur. You have been listening to Women Worldwide with your host, Deirdre Breckenridge. Segment two is coming right up. Creating brand loyalty requires a unique blend of strategic communications and innovative technology. Pure Performance Communications works with businesses to move their audiences from interest to action, giving you a roadmap that fosters deeper engagement and forges stronger relationships along the way. Visit us at pureperformance.com. Thank you. Now, back to Women Worldwide with your host, Deirdre Breckenridge. I'm Deirdre Breckenridge. Welcome back to the show. Peter Shankman, author, speaker, media personality, and all-around great guy. Uh, We were just chatting about ADHD. It's a gift, not a curse, um, and how life is all about choices. So, Peter, you really shared a lot of interesting information about yourself and how you're helping people. Um, Kind of jumping back into what we were discussing before, you know, if you are um, conditioned in a certain way. So, for example, you know, you said, okay, I I stopped drinking. I know that if I don't exercise, I'm not going to feel a certain way at the end of the day. How how hard or easy it is it to condition yourself for a new routine? Um, how do you make it a part of your personality? Give advice to others so that they can do the same. You know, I I always I run a like I said I run a mastermind called uh, Shank Minds, and I always find it funny when people quit. We get about ten percent of people that quit every month. That's fine, um, but they always quit, and I always send them an email saying, "Hey, just curious, you know, why you left?" and the number one reason they always give is because they were, uh, they didn't have enough time, right? They were too busy. They didn't have the time. And I always find that funny because it's like, you know what? We have the same amount of time. I'm pretty sure that I have the same 24 hours that you do. Yeah. And yet I somehow find the time to do it. So it's not so much need on the time, but rather it's not important enough to you. And so that is a huge point of reference because If you're not, don't say you don't have the time to do something. Understand that it's not that you don't have the time. It's that you don't 
want to, or you don't feel it to be important. You know, if you want to get up early to go to the gym, you have to give something up to make that happen. And that more than likely is going to be, you know, staying up late, but you need to understand that everything you want to do has a, a payoff and a trade off, right? The payoff is, yeah, I'll get up early and go to the gym. I look great when I do. The downside right. is, yeah, I have to go to uh, uh, bed early. It's what I have to do. So, you know, you have to understand there's, there's a middle ground there and you have to make sure that what you want is what you do. And it's not rocket science. It's very important. Well, it's kind of, it reminds me when, you know, I have friends who say, oh my gosh, I, I've got a schedule or I, I have to spend time with my family, that that is such a priority, but they don't actually make the time and schedule it on their calendar, which says, how important is that? You know, you, you have to carve it out. You've got to get it on your schedule. And it does speak to how important is it at the end of the day and what your top priorities are. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's, it's, you know, if you want to make it worth your while, that's what you have to do. But again, don't say you don't have the time. That's a bullshit excuse. Right. Yeah, everybody's busy. I don't, you know, and this is just a personal thing. I'm very careful. Um, I never say I can't do something because I'm too busy. Um, it might be a little crazy, but I can certainly fit it in here or there or let's schedule it, you know, at, at a, a later time. But I, I tend to see professionals say, I'm too busy. I'm really busy today. If somebody said that to you, what, what would be your take? You know, it's great to be busy, but if you're busy at the, it's the uh, uh, if you're busy to the point where you can't uh, do things that you want to do or improve your life or anything like that, well, then you have a problem. You know, mm-hmm. I, 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 we glorify busy, but the problem is, is that busy doesn't necessarily mean you're doing the right thing. You know, you can be busy. I'm busy. Everyone's busy. And I still have time to spend with my daughter. Right. Right. I still have time to go to the gym. Um, busy doesn't, doesn't give you an excuse. It's not a free pass to go do whatever you want. No, it's not a free pass. So being that busy isn't necessarily the right things and how we, we are a culture of busy. I always compare it to um, in New York, you will see lots of folks running around with their coffee cups, right? They're on the go or their food. When we were in Spain, you know, we, we visited my daughter when she was studying abroad last year in a little town called Alcala. And one of the things that she impressed upon us was there you sit and have your coffee. You're not, you know, you're not carrying your coffee around because that's a part of the culture. So I, I see it that, you know, we were just so conditioned to be busy and we really have to change our mindset. Exactly. It's really what it comes down to. Yeah. So let's do the flip side of busy. Flip side would be relax, right? Yeah. Or, or relaxing. What, you know, you, you mentioned the, the skydiving, you mentioned the runs. I don't know if you consider that as relaxing or you do other things to actually oh, no, that, that, relax. that is tremendously relaxing to me. But, you know, there are tons of things that are relaxing. It's, that's very peaceful to me, no question about it. But I think that also um, sitting down and watching bad TV is relaxing too. You know, shutting off your brain in that regard is very, very relaxing. I think that, again, in the end, you need to make sure that what you're doing is for the right reasons. And it's one thing, you know, on a Sunday or whatever, chill out and uh, uh, relax and do, you know, nothing and watch TV. It's another thing to watch TV until 2 in the morning every night and then complain that you have no time. Yeah. So true. Do you have any guilty pleasures of watching TV, Netflix? <laughs> I can I can watch The West Wing every day for the rest of my life and never grow old with it. Um, but I never. I also watch. Uh, I'm a huge fan of King of the Hill. Uh, you know, random TV like that. Even American right. Dad, Family Guy. You know, I, I love. 
stuff that, again, stuff I don't have to think about. For me, that's the that's the enjoyable part is I don't have to think about it. Yeah, it's kind of like Modern Family for me. Um, and, and I will admit that I watch The Housewives of New Jersey. <laughs> it's mindless. You know, sometimes it's annoying, mindless, but, <laughs> you know. It, it's in New Jersey, and that's where I am, so I like to keep track of that one. Yeah. Um, interesting. Do you do any kind of, um, I don't know, meditation, or you seem like a mellow kind of guy? Meditation comes from my runs. Um, okay. When I'm running, when I'm, on the, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm swimming, when I'm biking, things like that. That's where my, that's where my meditation comes from. And that's deep breathing. As well, I'm sure yeah. you're taking in. Yeah, I don't. I don't focus on. You know, I don't do meditations. I think do meditation. I, I find. I find that my meditation comes in, in other mm-hmm. things. So, uh, just this popped into my head. So I, I have to ask you: the first time you did your skydive, um, were you nervous at all? Oh yeah, I'm scared every time I jump. The day I'm not, I'm not scared. But I'm definitely aware I'm nervous. The day I don't. The day I don't get nervous is the day I quit the sport because okay. you have to understand you're jumping out of an airplane, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's not something, something very dangerous and something that's, that could kill you. So the day I'm right. not nervous, that tells me there's something wrong. Yeah. Okay. That's a really good way of putting it. Do you jump with somebody else? Like, you know how you have the buddy system or you're on your own? I'm on my own. I, have my own. I own my own gear. I can go to any drop zone in the world, show my license and jump. And so for me, um, that's what I do. Is there a favorite place that you go? Dubai was beautiful. Um, oh, I bet. You know, Barcelona was beautiful. Um, yeah, they vary. Very. I just, I, I, I love, it doesn't matter where I am. I just have a lot of fun. Oh my gosh. Well, it sounds thrilling, exciting. And I guess the relaxed part must be when you get, past the jump and you're just in the air and you're gliding. Is that the most relaxing part? I think the whole thing is, you know, I don't really have, there's no real one point that's better than another. For me, it's just having fun. Um, you know, being in the air, the fresh air, the breathing, it's all great. Sounds great. All right. So, you know, being the way that I'm going to pivot a little bit here, um, being the way that we met, you were, I think you had your own PR agency at the time. Um, you certainly know the value of building real relationships. Uh, you know, you're a busy entrepreneur, you're making choices. Let's talk about what a real relationship is to you. A personal relationship? Personal or professional. And give, and maybe give advice to how others can make their relationships better. I think a real relationship is knowing that uh, you can trust someone, knowing that you're there to help someone, knowing that someone's there to help you. Um, I think a real relationship is you can have any, anything can be a relationship as long as you are clear and aware of who you're dealing with and what you're doing. And, you know, at the end of the day, as long as you're not, full of shit, you know, too many people are, mm-hmm. um, you know, too many people are, and 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 uh, as they say, ain't no ain't no one got time for that, right? No, there's definitely no time. Do you find yourself? Um, are you a more give the benefit of the doubt? Everybody's my friend until proven otherwise, or you're going to work to earn my trust? Um, I will meet you. I will gladly chat with you. Whatever you want to talk about the first time, um, trust is something you earn. Um, I can certainly go into it in a good way. Um, I'm happy to, you know, meet up and listen, but it doesn't, it, all it basically takes is one screw up and then your history. Right. And when you meet with people, do you find um, nine out of 10 times or seven out of 10 times that it is a, a good meeting and that you can see it's going to lead to well, something? Or- more often than normal, it's a very, more often than not, it's a very good meeting. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, again, at the end, you want to be able to, um, like the people you're meeting with, uh, and, and hopefully that could produce something of value for both of you. Right. Um, yeah. 
Do you think that social media helps um, in any way, shape or form, or even just the ability to have so much information about Peter Shankman, that if somebody really wants a real relationship, they can do their homework and find out so much about you. So when they do get that first, you know, meeting with you, it they they can progress the relationship. It's like they know you in a sense. Well, first and foremost, just being able to do that, being able to do your homework and start talking to me in itself is a, is a huge benefit. There's certain people who don't bother to do that. Um, you know, how can I possibly trust you uh, to do whatever if you can't even um, take the time to Google or talk about what I'm doing or learn about who I am? You know, right. that kills me right there. So uh, to start, you know, the best thing you could possibly do is 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 do your homework. I mean, it's it's out there for God's sake. I know it's so easy. I tell that to my students all the time. Um, and I, I even asked them, and then they're pretty honest about it. I say, how many of you Googled me, you know, be before I started teaching this class? Well, what do you know about me? Or yeah. even oh, I, I catch them all the time when we have um, a special guest in the classroom. You know, I feel like I shouldn't have to remind them, you know, don't forget to Google the special guests. So that you yeah, can ask that, yeah. right, a, lot of, a lot of questions. You know, there are certain easy, the secret of the relationship and basically doing your homework, I think, is probably one of the most important. Do you find that um, it's harder to scale all of these relationships uh, because of social media? Or you're managing just fine. I'm fine with it. You know, I'm, I'm like, for instance, I'll be in Boston next week. And I, I post, if anyone wants to have coffee, come, uh, come meet. And, you know, 13 people have responded already. So we'll do a coffee afternoon. And, you know, why not? Right. What's, what's the worst that can happen? So I, I think that uh, it's great. I love, I love um, being able to continue uh, growing and meeting people. And I enjoy it. Yeah, Peter, do you meet them all together or are those that's 13 coffee dates for you? No, no, it'll be all together. It'll be, hey, let's have coffee with Peter and <laughs> everyone can meet up. Um, and then occasionally, you know, if, uh, like I said, I'll always take the meeting. If you want to meet, let's have coffee. Let's talk. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. I, I just figured if you had 13 cups of coffee. <laughs> that's a bit much. <laughs> that would be way, way over the coffee quota. Yeah, that's a bit much, yeah. <laughs> How many cups of coffee do you have a day? Usually about one. Yeah, me too. Just one in the morning. You know, I used to drink six cups when I was in college and as a young professional. And uh, yeah, I weaned myself off that a long time ago. I sleep a lot better at night, too. <laughs> I'm sure. As a result. Uh, so, you know what? Here's, here's an interesting question for you. Um, I'm sure you have a lot of views on work, travel, life. And, and being a, a dad, which, you know, I know you mentioned your daughter, she's the love of your life. Um, what advice would you give to your 21 year old self about all those things? Uh, don't worry so much. It'll be fine. Life is, life is too short. You know, you're spending way too much time working and, and it's way too much time worrying about things. Just go have fun, do what you do, do it well and enjoy yourself. And and everything else will will work itself out. Don't don't worry so much about what other people think. Just enjoy yourself. Yeah, that's really really good advice. Um, the time it takes to worry about what other people think, you could be doing so so much more. No I just saw. About it. Yeah, I, I was. Um, you know, Sarah Evans was on this show a while back, and we tend to pull out the compelling quotes from our guests, and she had something that she had said on the show kind of about, you know, don't, don't worry so much. It's not as big of a deal as you think. And it's kind of what you said when you think about it, those big issues, whether it was six months or a year ago or all the way back when you were 21 in hindsight, they're really nothing. You know, yes. as you, you so find that out as you age. So true. Of course, I'm not short. aging. Yeah. Life's too short. I'm not aging. I'm just getting younger. Uh, of course. <laughs> I like to say that. All right. Well, Peter, last question. Really simple. Where can my listeners find out more about you and all of the great things that you're doing? My entire world is at shankman.com. You can find everything there. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show, sharing your journey, your advice, insights, everything about ADHD. Really, really helpful. 
Awesome. Thank you. Here. Anytime. And I also want to thank all of you for tuning into Women Worldwide. Till our next episode, stay focused, energized, and feeling empowered. You have been listening to Women Worldwide with Deirdre Breckenridge, brought to you by Pure Performance Communications on the socialnetworkstation.com. You can reach Pure Performance at www.pureperformancecom.com. Women Worldwide is produced by SNI, and the opinions of the hosts and guests do not necessarily reflect those of Social Network Intermedia, LLC, or the Social Network Station.